system of linear differential equations if you want, but once an engineer gives you this, you can generate code and get some, some implementation of some code. Okay. And here, this is, a, this is a system that is inherently synchronous because okay, you have a information flow continuously through the boxes and you have a feedback here. This is a, this is a uh, this is an, a, a model of an ABS controller for cars, okay? And uh, so the same engineer who deals with uh, this, it has to, to deal with this tool and this type of things, uh, uses, for instance, uh, uh, UML to describe, okay, so when you program, you reason sequentially, you say it will happen this and then this and then this, okay? So programming the sequential. And then the problem is how to, 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 to put these two things Together, this is a non-trivial problem. How to combine symptoms and the symptoms from uh, And also, another important remark is that usually in, uh, in these uh, tools that come from uh, uh, physical systems engineering, you have, uh, you're using just mathematics. And uh, another interesting remark is that what is mathematically simple is not computationally simple. And here, I put it in a very Interesting example, unit delay, so unit delay, uh, any control engineer uses uh, unit delay, so this is a function that takes a, a sequence, uh, input here and, and delays it by one time unit. So this is the input, this is the output, I consider that the input is Boolean here. So if you try to build, say, a, a discrete system that, that, uh, that uh, simulates this behavior, so it will take a time to come up about that, and you see that uh, so here I will uh, this system, this automaton will detect this event. This is the rising edge of X, and then the falling edge of X, and uh, the rising and falling edges of Y will follow the rising and falling edges of X by a delay of one. Okay. Is this is this a correct? model for this. Here I, I'm making the assumption that when x goes up, then it will not fall back before uh, y raises. So you, you can see that this is not a correct model for this unless x does not change over one time period. Okay. If, if x changes too frequently or, or you have a non-bounded number of changes of x within one time unit, then you will need unbounded memory for this. So this shows that the relationship between the two worlds is not, is not, is not uh, uh, easy to establish. And uh, let me, talking about the uh, heterogeneity, let, let me consider another example. Uh, you know that in software engineering, uh, engineers program by using threads. And so here we have components. Uh, so what's the basic idea? That, okay, you understand this. And uh, okay, the problem with threads is that they can interfere when they are executing with working on shared data and you can get phenomena like races or deadlocks or things like that. And another model that is much cleaner and in fact of all the, 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 the formal frameworks for components adopt this model is uh, actor-based programming. And uh, what are actors? Actors are components that have their own state space and then they will have a very disciplined way to, to organize interaction So, uh, I, I believe that this is not a good model, this is dangerous and for people who have programmed, uh, for instance, in Java or other languages by using threads, we understand that, that this may be dangerous. <coughs> and have a master complexity. Yeah. Uh, now, the, of course, the question is why people are using this, is that of this, which looks much, much better. Of course, there are cultural reasons, but another reason is that if you are using such programming models, then you cannot generate efficient code. You cannot use efficient resources. You don't know how to optimize your code. And if you have questions, I can explain.
like this. So uh, the majority of people are using this type of programming, and this is programmat programmatic to, to, to model. Uh, finally, another source of heterogeneity is the fact that uh, when you are programming or uh, developing systems, you are using a large variety of interaction mechanisms. So, for instance, typically you can make use of the wood, this is strong synchronization, and others may use broadcast, which is asymmetric synchronization. You have a, 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 a sender that triggers uh, posting the receiver. So, you have a big variety of solutions, and you don't have a criterion to say whether well, this guy is using uh, semaphores or is using monitors uh, to, to, have, to have a means to uh, compare, compare the solutions. Okay. So, a uh, problem we have studied is uh, how is it possible to compare component coordination mechanisms. And, uh, okay, so we're looking for a, what we call a unified composition paradigm. Uh, and we have uh, three uh, criteria to, 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 to uh, okay, that characterize this paradigm of orthogonality. We need clear separation between behavior and coordination of strengths because so we have components, they have behavior, and coordination expressed only in terms of constraints. You don't have extra components that can play the role of coordinators, I will explain this. Uh, minimality, so we use a, a minimal set of primitives, of course, not to have too many primitives. And expressiveness, of course, that, that uh, the, okay, the coordination mechanisms are expressive enough to express any kind of coordination. Now, what I would like to say is that most uh, component composition uh, frameworks meet, uh, fail to meet these requirements. For instance, I know that here we have people that have worked on process algebras. This has been, uh, at least in the past, very popular in uh, theory communities. Uh, so the problem with process algebra is that do not distinguish between behavior and coordination. And in, uh, in software engineering, we have an important trend that was the development of architectural descriptions from languages. And the problem with these languages is that uh, most of them are ad hoc and lack rigorous semantics. So let me uh, say a few words about the technical results we have obtained and how I understand the problem of coordination of components. So any engineer who builds systems out of components wants to build a component C that satisfies the property P and uh, it has a, a set of uh, atomic components that are described by their behavior and then a set of glue operators, so the glue is a, a, com is a composition operator for components, so takes atomic components, builds composite components, and hopefully gets a composite components that satisfies the property P. This is a hard problem. So what we want to have is just uh, understand, okay, find expressive glue here and the notion of glue that is, uh, that is interesting and powerful enough. Now, the constraint that we are given here is that the blue operators are stateless. Stateless meaning that you don't have memory, because if you have memory, then you have memories in the yellow boxes in the atomic components. Okay, so how we can specify blue by using operational semantics? This is trivial, what I'm saying. But of course, you need a certain type of rules for operational semantics. And the idea is that the glue is used to build interactions of composite components from actions of atomic components. So a very simple example of glue is a composition operator for, for automa, for instance. So this, is, this can be considered as a glue operator. But you can have more general glue operators. So we have here explored this uh, without getting into the details. Let me give you an example. So if I have, say, these behaviors here, these transition systems. Uh, an operator, a new operator GM can be defined by rules like that. So uh, I don't understand the, 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 this type of rules. These are premise. If so, uh, from state to one, by performing A, you move to, to state two one prime, and in the product by A. So this is an intervening rule. And here you have a synchronization rule. Synchronization rule means so this defines an interaction AC because A and C are executed at the same time. And so interaction, so we, we can have uh, NRI under the hook, we can have interaction.
instructions as, as uh, in languages like, uh, I don't know, CSP. Uh, and uh, then we have this type of rules that allows to express priorities. And this is necessary for expression. So this rule says that if uh, one B1 can do this move, and the other guy, this one, cannot execute C, then, okay, and, and we have shown that priorities are very, very important. Uh, so we have this formula BIP, behavior interaction priority, and, and we have shown that any, by, by combining interactions and priorities, you can express any type of clue, and we have what we have for the universal expressiveness. And, uh, also, our group has very interesting properties. I, I, I'm explaining a few of them. Here, one is uh, incrementality, what it means incrementality. If I have a set of components, say 10 components glued together, then I can explain how I can compose 9 plus 1. So I can, this is a kind of generalized associativity, okay, because okay, I don't have a single operator, I have a I have many blue operators. And the dual for this is flattening. So if I have a, a component like that, that is a composite component, I know how to flatten it to compose the glues to get a single blue operator with the same components. And think about your favorite uh, language, your favorite formula, and I'm sure you don't have such a problem. So this means that glue is uh, an entity as such, you can have it, analyze it, and you can, by analyzing the do, uh, infer some properties of the components of the component. So, this is uh, the idea, and uh, in order to compare different goods, we have a notion of expressiveness. I, I will explain very quickly. So, uh, what it means that a glue is more expressive than the other, so I have here the green glue, totally in the text, the green glue and the red glue. And I will say that the red glue is more expressive than the green. If So, for any set of atomic components, if I build a composite component by using the green glue, I can, without modifying the atomic components, build an equivalent component by using the red glue. So just to consider an example, uh, uh, for instance, if I have, uh, if my glue is, uh, uh, the green glue is broadcast. Broadcast meaning weak synchronization. Uh, can I uh, express any coordination that I can achieve by using broadcast with uh, strong synchronization? Question. This is probably true, but the opposite is not true. The opposite is not true. If I have a strong rendezvous, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, achieve the same type of the same coordination by using broadcast. Perhaps I can achieve it by adding additional uh, coordinators. So I have another notion. Well, so this is to give you a flavor about the results we have, and, and uh, these are results we have published almost uh, seven years ago that show that if I have behavior interaction priorities, I can I can have the same same expressive power, and I can resolve any uh, uh, coordination problem without adding uh, without adding components. And uh, so this is uh, the basic uh, type of components we have in BIP. So you have a behavior, so this is C code, the actual C code, you have a control skeleton of our patterns with, with the C functions and data. And then you have a, a green group that is this interaction, so essentially protocols, uh, strong synchronization by your so uh, just intuitively why this combination is very important. It's very important because if uh, uh, so coordination is about cooperation and this is achieved by using protocols and then we have also to resolve conflicts and this is uh, so need schedulers and this is achieved by priorities. Now we have theories that allow 
the composition if I have components like that, and I put interactions and priorities, interaction between the two and priority of the two, we have a compiler that flattens the components and performs some checking. So here the interactions is, are obtained by combining the interactions of the two with the interactions between the two, and similarly with priorities, and we have some results also. And uh, this is the story about the So now to finish, let me say a few words about correctness by construction. So, what's the idea of correctness by construction? Uh, in fact, we start from requirements, we want the application software to, to satisfy functional requirements, and then the idea is that we refine the application software to get the system model. And uh, here, so far, a, a, a very important idea is to use architectures, to use architectures to uh, For, for, for correctness by construction. So, this you know, engineers are using extensively architectures, not the defined reference architectures, they put on the web, you can play with that. So, the idea is that an architecture is a principle for coordinating components in order to achieve a property, a global property. And if you know how to apply architectures and you understand what is the architecture, then you can have correctness for free. And uh, this is my definition of architecture. So what is an architecture? It's a family of operators. So this parameterized by n, n is the number of arguments that take a set of components here. And an architecture, in fact, uh, it consists of two things. It's the glue between the components that you coordinate with some coordinators. So these are extra components that are coordinators. And the resulting system, the resulting component, needs a characteristic <coughs> property. So, say I have an architecture that is a token ring architecture, the characteristic property is that it, it uh, enforces good resolution. So, if you understand what does a token ring architecture, then you can, you can build something that, that uh, is, is a system that achieves a mutual exclusion distributed mutual exclusion. As to give you another example, you say clients have an architecture. So this is an operator that is applied to clients and servers, so to types of components. And uh, this, in principle, can be decomposed into a broker here, a trans transaction processing element, and the glue between components. And uh, okay, so if if you understand how to do that, to do that, uh, then you can uh, ensure. By construction, characteristic properties like atomicity of transactions and for tolerance. So, if you buy a, a, a good uh, client server architecture, this is, this is guaranteed. It's not even needed to understand formally what it means atomicity of transactions and for tolerance. Okay? Consider another type of architecture, time taking architecture, you probably care about that. They are sold now, they are used in, in industry by a common particular. Uh, so in the time thinking of architecture we have uh, uh, so it combines two protocols, a literal action protocol and uh, a clock synchronization protocol. But when you have an engineer you are using it, you know that it will guarantee some properties and, and you are capable of that. Now uh, so the basic idea is to use architectures. Of course, to use architecture means that you formalize the application of architecture. So this is code, this is code, and you have a clean way to formalize this and to do that. But once you have understood this, you have formalized this, then you know that this is a mutual exclusion architecture applied to a set of components. It guarantees mutual exclusion. Now, another uh, very important problem you have when you are doing this type of exercise is how to combine different architectural solutions. For instance, I know how to enforce mutual exclusion. I know how to enforce a given scheduling policy that I like. And here I have the same set of components. Is it possible to have an architecture that enforces the two property here? And this is a non-trivial problem that we have studied, and this is a problem of composability of properties. So I have uh, libraries of solutions and the problem is how to combine this 
to achieve global properties. And here I would like to talk about an interesting pro uh, project developed uh, uh, by uh, uh, Google uh, Research whatever. This is the uh, ARA project. So the dream is uh, to uh, democratize mobile phones. And the idea is that you could have to buy initially a skeleton and then call it an endoskeleton and then you can plug different kinds of modules. And you have the iPhone, you can okay, type the smartphone you like. Okay? And if you Google this, I mean if you make a search in the web, you will see a lot of discussion about this project. And many people believe that they will not be successful. And they have had promised a demo uh, beginning of uh, this year, I think that failed. Okay? And the reason they may fail is quite uh, easy to understand, we have no theory about, about that. And then, okay, the, we have also some theory about how to refine, uh, how, how, how to refine models, but I don't have enough time, and I'm not going to discuss this, I would like to spend a few minutes uh, uh, to conclude. Okay, so, uh, for the discussion, I think that Design formalization is a very, very important problem and it has two, at least two aspects. One is the language problem. The problem is how to use uh, programming languages that are easier to formalize, to understand. There is an important trend that is to use domain-specific languages, this I like. Uh, there are many problems how to be closer to the declarative style, be as close as possible uh, to requirements, how to support both synchronous and asynchronous uh, execution. Okay, so a lot of problems to be solved. We don't have the best possible programming languages, everybody agrees today. And then the other, uh, the other demand is uh, for constructivity. So today you have a huge body of uh, uh, solutions to problems. These are hardware protocols, hardware architecture, etc. So you have libraries, you know how to solve problems, you have to formalize the solutions, and then in terms of architectures, prove their correctness, and then to have a method to combine these architectures to uh, uh, build systems that meet, build uh, global problems. This is my dream. This is this is my, my research agenda, in fact. Now, uh, another interesting question is why uh, studying design is so hard? Studying mixed hardware software systems uh, is, is so hard. I think that there are some interesting analogies I don't have time to discuss that have to do with the fact that we are dealing, in fact, we have uh, to consider analyze systems at different levels of abstraction. And uh, uh, you have similar problems in physics or, 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 or in, in biology. And the problem here is how to climb up and go down in these abstractions. So uh, physics is a well-established discipline. You know that they don't know how to infer the properties of molecule of water from the properties of atoms oxygen and hydrogen, and there is some similarity, uh, you don't know how to infer say, the global properties of a set of, 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 of uh, system of taxes. So there are some similarities and some differences, and it's interesting to, to, to study or to think about that. Now I would like also to advocate uh, uh, design, it's something very, very important, at least as important as, as uh, science because science allows us to understand the phenomena, the <coughs> real world. So here we have, uh, okay, you have knowledge, and uh, when uh, you design, you are using knowledge and you build artifacts. And I think that today, with the advent of cyber-physical systems, the design of, of uh, uh, computing systems, I mean, we are, Computer scientists are well positioned to talk about the design of anything, in fact. We better understand than any.
anybody, any other uh, engineering discipline, this, this thing. And we are, so this is the challenge to do today. And uh, achieving, uh, okay, meeting this challenge is, uh, is, is something uh, really important. And uh, well, I let you read uh, uh, this today. I think we don't have uh, we have the responsibility because uh, the cyber world is a uh, world built from humans, and, and the question is whether we have built the best uh, of all possible cyber worlds, and I think not. So this is uh, thank you very much, and this is a paper I would like to advertise that. Similar 
problem, you know, if you're, if you're trying to build a, an architecture which will enforce a certain property, you're in a sense. Yes, but then architecture is just a fear. It's like a fear I'm saying uh, uh, you have a constructive theory of seeing geometry, okay? Euclidean geometry, okay? You know you can do things like that, like that, okay? It will work, okay? The problem is to do things properly. So, you have plenty of distributed algorithms. You have protocols that have been proven correct once and for all, okay? The, the problem is that the proofs you find in the literature, for instance, for the distributed algorithms, is that uh, in the literature, we have very abstract proofs, and it's very hard to make detailed proofs of distributed algorithms. Usually, the proofs are like that. You make some assumptions about the coordinated components, so these are some formulas, and then you want to prove some implication. So, if the, the components, the coordinated components, enjoy these properties, some other constraints, then this is a bigger implication. So this is far from being really something that you can execute, okay? And, and what we are doing, and I have examples here I can show, is that we generate code for distributed algorithms. And how do we do that? It's very simple, I mean, very simple. The principle is very simple. So if we have a model and we have, say, an interaction, strong interaction by rendezvous, then we will replace this rendezvous by a protocol that will involve send and receive asynchronous message passing, etc. Okay? So we replace this piece of code by another piece of code. You have, of course, a lot of problems because you have, you have to do. I mean, you have to make mathematical proofs, but the mathematical proofs are done once and for all. And then, we know, we know how to do that. And so we have a systematic way to pass from a model that has strong synchronization, etc., to a defined model. And this is done at the level of the code, okay? The, 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 the model is the software. I can show you examples, okay, yeah, offline. I, I, I think I understand what this yes. is. Okay. 